Splunk.conf 2025. Very interesting conference. And uh, if I had to name one thing only that kind of burned itself into my mind, that was the AI canvas that they had were automatically based on all the data that was funneled from the data fabric and from the machine data lake. And basically you could just ask it a question and it would build you a dashboard. So this whole death by dashboard thing, basically a thing of the past, because now it knows who you are, what situations you're in and uh, what you've just asked. And then it will basically give you all the metrics and uh, uh, an overview of what's going on uh, relevant to your current situation. That was the number one for me. What was the number one for you? So that one was, that is really interesting. Uh, and I'll just say that's the same Canvas technology that Cisco announced with their Agentic Ops solution at Cisco Live US this summer. Yep. So th probably the big takeaway for me, I'll tell you the number one thing was just Cisco showing up and being so supportive and uh, sort of mm -hmm. really you know, empowering of Splunk, bringing technology to the table, yeah. um, presenting in a way that is essentially preserving the original Splunk mission and culture. So uh, yeah. everyone's kind of worried when these acquisitions happen, because sometimes it's just, you know, okay, now you're, 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 you know, part of the big company now, and we're going to go our way. That's totally not what happened. You know, Cisco showed up, G2 Patel showed up the, the opening keynote and basically said, one of our key objectives is to not screw this up. <laughs> and yes. So they did that. I, I remember um, that. Canvas is a great example of that. I mean, for me, the other big thing is, of course, since I cover networking, enterprise networking, um, just all of the, the strategy around bringing network data into the Splunk fold more fully, because it's always been something that's been done that. as corner case. Um, and there's been value observed. It just hasn't really been developed because everyone's focused on the course Splunk use cases, which have been around logs and a lot about security, but bringing machine data in. So maybe I'll tee up the next one for you, which is the Cisco data fabric and the machine data lake. That was pretty, pretty impressive to me. What did you think of that? Yes, the, the, the machine data, you know, it's something that it came almost out of left field. There's data that gets collected anyway on all of the Cisco network devices that you have floating around there. And then it gets also locally processed to basically not have to dump all of this data into one central uh, point, uh, but it basically gets processed where the processing is cheap, right, on the devices. They have that processing power anyway. Uh, and then the question of what does it do when you actually train an LLM with that data? So they called it, oh, they want to have like a chat GPT that speaks machine learning. Obviously it has nothing to do with chat GPT and open AI, just an LLM that is able to talk to, um, to machine to machine data, not machine learning, to machine data. So basically time yeah. series data. And uh, the interesting part about time series data is it just gets dumped by all of those different devices, uh, petabytes a day for a large company. And there is so much potentially in there, right? I don't think we know how much there is in there because it's just so much data. They, they record everything, you know, they record the temperature, they record power peaks, they record <laughs> throughput uh, issues, all kinds of things. And yeah. what happens if you train an LLM there and then you talk in natural language, uh, to that LLM, and can you ask it, you know, wh wh where do you see the problems next quarter before Black Friday? And then it looks at what happened last year and compares it with billions of data points this year. And this is something that goes beyond the human understanding, but this is when it gets really exciting, right? This, this whole big data thing. And that is something I think that only Cisco can do to that degree because they're the only ones having access to all of this data on those devices. What do you think? Is is that yeah. really, uh, when you look at other observability vendors, they, they are not easily able to do that, right? Well, right. This brings together kind of the best of multiple worlds. Because in the networking community, they've all, all of the, uh, everyone's been working on large volumes of machine data, trying to look for anomalies and trends. Um, and Splunk just hasn't tended to get put use in that way. I mean, years ago, we were, we, have, we were trying to figure out how do we put 
network flow data into Splunk. Because by the way, there's some really interesting data to be found, especially when you're trying to correlate anomalies and incidents. Um, and, and that just hasn't been practical. So this is an important part of the Cisco data fabric and the new machine data lake is a new approach to licensing and indexing in particular, because in Splunk, you pay to index data into the search engine. Now there's all these ways, including federation, including these alternative locations where you can store the raw data and only you know, process and index uh, subsets of that data to be your key indicators you work off of. And then you pull data, more data in as you need to. So it actually brings the cost way down to what the old approach had been, makes it more scalable, more practical, all of the great things that are needed for really leveraging and, and melding these data sets together. I don't think anyone would argue that there's great value in bringing these data sets together. The question is, is how do we do that, you know, and do it cost effectively and with a, you know, acceptable level of performance. So really exciting. I think Splunk as part of Cisco uh, has a chance now, and really they charted a path on how they're going to address and solve that problem. I think they really look like they are doing more than just not screw up Splunk. And uh, yeah. that is, uh, that's more than a lot of people expected. And yeah, really leveraging both the strengths of both companies together. And I think that's the biggest compliment you can make after such a massive uh, acquisition. Yeah.